But you know what? One thing that uh, Vincent said, he said, no ongoing abuser works alone. He or she always has a network of people to help them be who or how they are, which is a monster. Look at Kells. He rotten in jail. Wow. The folks that Thank helped you. him. Thank you. And let me read it again. No ongoing abuser works alone. He or oh, she oh, always oh. has a network of people to help them be who or how they are, which is a monster. And he said, not my words, but Vincent's, that Larry is a dark, deviant, evil, narcissistic hypocrite. His words, his words, not man. His words. He pissed him off the fact that he wanted to start telling everything now. Because he knows that's the thing. That's the thing. That's why it should happen. Because he, somebody got mad because of something. So I'm just going to tell it all. He went got a diagnosis on Sunday. And what he claimed was, what he claimed was, now I don't know if this is entirely why he did this, but he claimed that um, he was basically, he had done this uh, series on abuse. And he said when he did this series on abuse, he just came to realization that there was just certain things that he could no longer keep inside. That's what he said. I don't know if it's Mad Day. I don't know if Larry did something to him or his conscience just eating his ass up. Okay. I don't know. So it's like we, you know I don't know, but I'm glad. I'm glad he spoke out. I'm so glad he spoke out because there's a lot of people who have spoke out in the past. A lot of people spoke out in the past, and what Larry do? He try to silence him. He'll take you to court. He'll try to get a cease and he done did it to the biggest bloggers. Tasha K. Oh, uh, well, ain't no more season to see going down now. Sure. You said Larry has turned those kids against their own mother. Yep, yep, sure did. And yes, this is video number seven for Buddha. Yeah, he, he's I been doing a know. series on this. That's a mean stroke. That's a mean game to make me turn against my, my own mother. I mean, you. I don't give a damn. What, what, I don't care what your sexual preference is, no matter if you're gay, straight, uh, no matter. That's what some of the mothers were saying, though. Some of the mothers were saying, I, like maybe a few years ago, when a lot of this was blowing up, they were saying that he would take their kids and he would be like controlling their kids. It was kind of like the R. It was kind of okay. like the R. Kelly thing where, you know, the kids, they would get wrapped it's up okay. around R. Kelly and then they would be like, don't want to have shit to do with their own uh, parents. Yep, yep, yep. Hold on, I think somebody's in the background. Hold on, let me. Uh, I gotta throw up my good old banner just to make sure it ain't no troll. Okay, long story, start marching. Now we gotta hold it up until we die. What's up? Did you hear me, bro? Hey, <laughs> I can up? hear you. Hey. Um, how you doing? Oh, I'm fine. How are you doing? I am doing wonderful. You got good, something to good. add to the show today? Yeah, Lord, there's so much. You know, most most of the people that are talking about this, they haven't been with us from the beginning. When Daryl Moore and I started doing this whole conversation about Larry, uh, a lot of people don't know how this stuff started. This stuff started because of an initial lawsuit. Um, and Daryl didn't go looking for victims. He didn't go looking for all of this stuff. These people came to us and asked us to have their voices heard. And Daryl did a masterful job of researching, you know, studying and, and really researching this and looking into this. And I wanted to say this to you guys. You guys are right on it, first of all. Larry's going to do nothing but manipulate this situation. He's going to continue to lie. But the truth is out there. And what I find egregious in this whole matter and what really should make people's eyes and ears perk up is the fact that this man claims to be a pastor, a leader in the Come Lord's on, church. Come on, um, baby. He, Come on. You know, he, he claims, you know, he claims to be someone 
who is prophetic and who speaks the oracles of God. And I have said this to Larry, and I will say this to you guys publicly again and again. Larry's no more a prophet than Donald Duck. He is the same kind of individual that Bernard Jordan is. It is egregious, it, and, and it's just going to keep unfolding. And I had to tell Daryl and them today, I said, you all listen to me very carefully. Before this is all said and done, and I have said this to Larry publicly, and I'm going to say it again on your platform. This will follow Larry Reed for the rest of his life. This tree has been shaken, and there will continue to be people who will fall out of this tree who will reveal who Larry Reed is. Point blank. This is going to be talked about for a long, long time. They're going to study the manipulative tactics of this man. You're going to, there are going to be churches and pastors and leaders who are going to use this as an example to tell their congregation and to teach their leadership what not to do. Okay. Um, this is going to get larger and bigger than what we are even experiencing right now. What you all think you're looking at right now, you have no idea how big this is about to get. Okay. And so I just want to say, keep talking. Uh, keep warning your family members, your loved ones about these types of tactics from so-called leaders and people who claim to be in the Lord's church. Um, and I'll leave it there uh, until Daryl and I speak about this later. Uh, I just want to tell you, you guys do your very best to do your homework and your research because this gets deep. Uh, we didn't make anything up on Larry. Uh, they can lie and say whatever they want. But every single time we turn around, we're being vindicated every single day. Every and day, I, I believe you. I mean, I've been following Daryl Moore um, for a while, even before the situation with Larry Reed. And so, when he came out and he was doing the interviews, I thought it was a great interview when he was talking to the young men. And when he just came out here and just he has this thing where he tries to use his power and his money to silence people and scare you into silence or scare you to lose your channels or go to court or you know, right. things like that. so people will just shut up. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I'm glad people still talk about it. I really am. Well, and we knew we knew that that was we knew that that was going to happen. Um, you know, because I've been with Daryl since day one of this situation, and you know, I'm going through a legal battle of my own, not with Larry Reed. Um, you know, and therefore I wasn't able to speak how I wanted to speak in the in the fashion that I wanted to speak. But every now and then I'll dip in. Um, and, and I'm out here on these YouTube streets. I, I'm in the streets, <laughs> as they say, uh, but I'm listening and I'm watching and I'm watching those individuals who have enough integrity and wherewithal to do their homework and their research. Cause I don't come on everybody's platform. Um, that's not something that I do. You don't never see me out here talking to everybody. I don't do that. I sure, I but sure I, haven't. I really haven't seen you just out here all over the place yet. That's true. Yeah, I don't do that, but I will come on if I feel like the person is, you know, trying to be fair and give some balance to the conversation. I've been, I've followed Larry Reed so long and see, most of you don't know who I am. Uh, let me, let me, let me just, re, let me go back a little bit. I followed Larry Reed before Larry Reed became Larry Reed. Okay. When Larry was broke and was doing Uber and was doing all kinds of other things to make money, I knew Larry way back then. OK, okay. Uh, um, I used to do a show called the Church Folk Revolution. We did it for about seven, eight years. We owned a website called pimpreacher.com. Right. So any of your church stories, that was our website that you went to to read about uh, from you name it. We did it. When Larry Reed came out, we had just ended our radio show and I decided it. you know, I just didn't want to talk about these church folk no more because I was tired. I'm tired of church people. I really am. I'm tired. A lot of us so are. I, <laughs> so I said, I said, okay, Lord, I don't want to do this no more. And so I sent all of the people that used to listen to our radio show and watch us on the internet. I sent everybody to Larry. Cause when Larry first started, when Larry came out, he said, well, God has spoke to him and told him to come out of the church and he wasn't supposed to start no church or be involved with that anymore. And all of this other stuff. Right. And so I just sent everybody over there. I said, well, this guy's over there talking. You guys go listen to him. And the more I listened to Larry, the more I said, boy, I done made a big mistake. Because I sent all of our following over to Larry. 
I would email them every time Larry's shows came on. I would send them over there. I said, oh, man, I done messed up. And, and I'll, I'll take the onus for that. I messed up. And I said, oh, man. And I stopped listening to Larry when he did that Juanita Bynum story. And he lied on Juanita Bynum. Anybody knows I don't, I don't care for these preachers too much at all. Anybody who knows me knows I will tell you the straight up truth about most of them. Because I've been around this mountain for many years. But he lied on Juanita Bynum. Because he don't like Juanita Bynum. And he has a personal vendetta against Juanita Bynum. And when he lied on Juanita Bynum, I said, oh, man, I, I done really messed up. And I was trying to call Larry then because I had some private conversations with Larry offline. Um, I've talked about this on different platforms, different videos, whatever. When he deceived everybody and made that woman out to be like she was halfway crazy for, for being feeling accosted that some man entered her hotel room where her bras and her panties and stuff had been laid out by her staff. When some pastor goes into her personal room, hotel room, which he had no business being there when his wife was out of town. And we ain't going to go down that road. But Larry turned that whole story. Yeah, Larry turned that whole story around on Juanita Bynum. And I was furious. I was furious. And I said, oh, man, I can't deal with this dude no more. And I said, I'm finished. And then I got the boot. Because I used to call into Larry's show, if anybody remember, from way back in the day. I got booted from Larry's program because Larry lies all the time. Him and Bernard Jordan, I called him out live on Larry's program. And that's why y'all ain't never heard from me no more. Larry was lying to those people and taking those people's money, in my opinion. And he told those people that he was going to give Bishop Brown's wife a whole bunch of money because yep, she was being... She was being put out of the house and all of this stuff. And I called in and I told Bernard Jordan and Larry, quit asking these people for money. And you tell Bernard Jordan to write her a damn check because I he done took that. her tie. He done took her money. You tell him to write her check and quit begging these people for money. If everybody claims that they are a millionaire and they got all of this money, you don't need to come online and ask these people to do nothing. Write her a check. Simple as that. Got me to boot. The man said I was trying to make a name off of him and all of this other kind of stuff he said. And I, I was just amazed at this. But I have talked to Larry's personal friends. I have talked to all of the accusers. I have talked to pastors who've had interactions with Larry Reed. I've talked to pastors who've had interactions with Bernard Jordan. I have, we have done our homework. And the only reason why he wanted to shut Daryl up is because Daryl could tell you what he had for breakfast and it was scaring the hell out of Larry. Mm, I know Shem I've talked mm -hmm. talk to, we've talked to Shamako's family members. Don't get it twisted. We do our work. Now it's different when you got to go into court and somebody's playing games in court. You know, people are playing all of these games. Oh, you know, they're talking ambiguously so they don't, you know, in implicate themselves. And you like they did in the Fannie Willis had to abruptly tell it, shut these fools down today down there in Georgia on, with Donald Trump. Everybody's talking in, ambiguously and they never get to specifics. Ask a specific question and say what you want to know and somebody will answer the question. But Larry's full of shit. And I don't mean to curse on your, your platform here. And, and I apologize. Oh, no, you know, you're but, fine. Everybody else do. <laughs> you know, you know, Larry's full of shit and I don't trust him. And, and I heard some things today, even about his children that I'm not going to repeat yet um, publicly, you know, because we do our homework. Y'all need to be praying for Larry's kids. And, and that's the honest to God truth. And, and I want you guys to hear me. If you believe in prayer, you need to be praying for his children. If anything, you need to be praying for his kids. And I, that's real talk, because imagine if you had to sleep in a room next to somebody where all of this madness is going on. Uh, can I interject one thing? Don't 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 go nowhere. Sis. I'm here. Everything, everything he's saying. Isn't it confirmation to the same thing I said before? Absolutely. Everything you're saying is confirmation, even down to 
the kids and I said, people play kids like they're stupid. Those kids are not stupid. His daughter having a, a, a substance problem or whatever it was, it probably was a coping mechanism. But I'm not going to interrupt you. I want you to go ahead. Even down to Bishop Bernard Drew. I told you even earlier today, I said it before, but I said earlier today, I don't trust that man. It's well, something I mean, that's you, right about him. Go ahead. You, got, you guys think about it. These grown men spending the night with one another. Now think about this. And you see, this is where, this is why I tell Larry and I tell Daryl and I tell all these people, see, I know how to connect dots. When you take George Bloomer, uh, what's that other? James Hall, okay, Larry Reed, uh, all 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 the gay men, all them dudes, they all going and stand at spending the night at Airbnbs. What what grown men you know go to have sleepovers, and there ain't no women involved. Who's cooking? Who's making me a sandwich? Uh -huh. You know who uh -huh. who. who who, who, who? James yeah. and Manasseh and Dewey and all of them. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I just can't. Y'all have to use common sense. People just need to use common sense. This is a, this is a, this is a nightmare situation. But God is not going to be mocked. A lot of people just don't want to see it. A lot of people just don't want to see it. A lot of people just don't want to see it. Like, I don't know if you were in his chat earlier. I left his chat because I saw he was still gaslighting and trying to get people to pay that $24.99 to go over to the uh, Patreon to hear what he got to say. And I'm like, nope, you're not going to gaslight me like you've been gaslighting people. I'll watch the free 99 and then I'll wait till other people pay for the $24.99. Then I'll do commentary off of their shit, right? But right. what do you have to say about when um, Vincent was talking today? And he basically was calling uh Jordan out. Oh, he was calling him out to the pulpit. He should. He said, uh, if you don't deem him, if you don't uh stand up for all the people that all the innocent people who have been, I'm gonna just say what exactly he said. If you don't stand up against the people, the innocent ones who have been trampled over by this dark deviant psychopath, then people need to deem you as a false prophet. If you cannot see Larry Reed for what he is, then people need to deem you as a false prophet. And, and he, he said, will never do, the do right it. Thing. Bernard, he said, do the right thing. And Bernard Jordan will never do that. And you know why? Because Larry Reed does Bernard's dirty work. When for, from I have spoken with pastors and preachers who have made me fully aware, who were close to mm -hmm. Bernard Jordan, that when Bernard Jordan has an alt or something against you, he uses vloggers and other people. It used to be William McCray, but now it's Larry Reed. Okay. Um, and he uses Larry to go after certain preachers. Anytime Larry is on his platform going after people, you all need to start thinking about what is Larry's motive for doing this? Why is Larry actually telling this story? Why is he revealing this information? What's the purpose behind him doing this? How does Larry benefit from this? Or how does Bernard Jordan benefit from this, right? Whether you all know it or not, Bernard Jordan is not respected amongst most of the black clergy in America. He is not. He is looked at as a charlatan. He is looked at as a as a elixir selling, you know, you know, thief. That's how he's looked. And he knows that he has never been on the the TBNs or the CBNs. He's never been in the larger network of, te of Christian television. He has always been on the outskirts. You find Bernard Jordan on at 1 a.m. in the morning, 2 a.m. in the morning. You find him on the Word Network or BET or, you know, some off name shoot station. He's never been on major Christian television. Right. And the reason why that is, is because no one amongst Christians respect him or honor him. We know who he is and what he is. Okay. So nobody, nobody looks at him as being no authoritative person when it comes to the preaching of the gospel. No one looks at him or his son and then robo calls and his son learned all of that from his dad. If you want, if whatever Manasseh's doing, Manasseh learned that from his daddy. He didn't yeah. get that anywhere else, but from his dad. Now I want to speak okay. to some, go ahead. I was just going to say the only thing he got from somebody else was the wardrobe. He got that from Michael Jackson, but go ahead. 
<laughs> the Captain Crunch outfits. Yes, I agree. <laughs> L- listen, listen to me. I'm gonna be. Uh, this is real talk. I got to say this. When Daryl and when Daryl first brought to me the Buddha series, when Buddha had started this series, and me and Daryl will probably talk about this tonight. Daryl and I got into a huge argument. Me and him and the moderators. We was over there fighting. Uh, and I think we're gonna probably, and I, we're probably gonna talk about this tonight because I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this up. When they brought to me Buddha's first couple of videos, I wasn't buying Buddha's story. I told Daryl and them, I said, "Listen here, Daryl, and they'll tell you tonight. We're gonna have a good conversation." I said, "Listen, until Buddha start naming names and coming out with the proof that I know he has, I don't want to hear anything Buddha has to say because he was just as complicit with that foolishness as the rest of them, right?" And we got into a real heated argument because we, we, I was trying to explain to them what is an apology. Because we got a funny way in the world of, of viewing an apology. People don't even realize what constitutes an apology. And I'll just say this on your platform. If you, if you wrong me and you do something against me and you come to me and you say, I apologize if you think I did something, that's not an apology. That's not you acknowledging what you have done. When you come to me and you say you apologize, number one, there must be a first acknowledgement that you knew you did something wrong to, to me and that you did wrong. You have to acknowledge it. Number two, you need to name it. What did you do against me to harm me, whether physically, mentally, verbally? What did you do? You need to verbalize it. You need to say it out of your mouth. The third thing that you need to do is you need to take corrective action to correct the behavior. Because if you keep apologizing, but you keep doing the same thing over and over again, that is not an apology. You haven't apologized to me. And Larry keeps coming out here trying to pretend like he's apologizing to these people while he fully knows that he's not apologizing to them. He's gaslighting. He's lying. He just... From what I understand today, he called Buddha a liar. He he did that. He did. That's basically what he's calling everybody liars. Insanity. Insanity. I was there from the beginning. If y'all go all the way back to the E. Dewey Smith case, the lawyer in the E. Dewey Smith case asked Larry Reed, say, hey, Larry, who makes up all of your um, your graphics and all of your stuff? Larry lied to me. Oh, I do it. And, and Larry knows that's a lie. Daryl Moore woke me up one morning at 7.30 in the morning. He said, Marcellus, I need you to go watch this person. I never heard of these people in my life. I got up at 7 o'clock because I live on the West Coast. I, I live on, I don't get up that early. So I'm up at 7.30 in the morning watching somebody called T.S. Madison. And uh, Larry ended up coming on the program. Daryl was in the chat. He was lying on Daryl then. And he told those people that le- that Daryl was in the process of suing him. And that's why he couldn't talk to Daryl one-on-one, which was a lie. There was never any legal case between him and, and Daryl at the time that conversation transpired. At the time that that transpired, Buddha was what uh, everybody referred to him as, Buddha was working for T.S. Madison. I wonder if people know that. Yeah, Do people know that? I remember then they fell out. I remember all that because I follow T.S. Madison. So mm-hmm. I was like, okay, why is this man telling all these lies? Larry don't know any of this technical stuff. Larry doesn't know how to run a, a platform. All of these things he learned from Buddha. He uses people for what they can bring to the table. And when he's done with you, he ships you on off. And then he says, you're angry or you're vindictive or you're mad. And the reason why him and I fell out is because you can't control me and you're not going to tell me what I can talk about. You're not going to tell me how I address subjects and and subject matters. Anybody who knows me, y'all know I'm going to call out the truth and I'm just going to say it the way a T.I. is. I don't give a fuck if you don't like it. Period. And it is what it is. You let the chips fall where they may. Y'all need to be praying about Larry. And somebody should call for a wellness check on them children. I swear to God, if if this something is not right, I'm trying to tell y'all something ain't right. 
Child, Cislo was just saying that earlier. She was. She was just saying that earlier. A friend in the chat said, I don't trust any of them on the major Christian networks. A yeah. Well, I, Marcellus, you just got a new best friend, baby. I know. <laughs> do you got your own channel or do you just be uh, uh, affiliated on Daryl's channel? Listen, you guys can still look me up at Mad Church Disease and go over there and subscribe to my channel. There's no content on there yet, uh, but y'all hold y'all horses because when I I'm come back, we're going to have. Hold yeah, we're going to have a straight up revival. I, I, I got something for you because as soon as I release this book, I'm coming on your on your panel. Talk about it. Oh, I just subscribed. Yeah, you, Let me drop your link in the chat real quick. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Let me get your link. And the name of my book, Marcellus, The Last Shall Be First Rated. You said The Last Shall Be what? First Rated or First Lady? First Lady. And The Last. Oh, okay. Shelby okay. first lady. Yep. Okay. All right. Yep. Well, I'm going to be interested in reading that. You know, people send me their books all the time. So I will read it and, and shout this you out. So. It's going to be good. She has a good story. She used to be a first lady. So she, she has a good story that she has to tell. Oh, okay. Well, you know, I have a former first lady that was in the part of the Church Book Revolution. Well, all of us that are part of the Church Book Revolution, we were all in leadership. So we were ministers, pastors, et cetera, et cetera. So everybody was in some sort of leadership role, right? And that's why our platform grew so big and everybody you know, came to us and so forth. But I really, I really wanna say I appreciate you guys for talking about this and giving this the respect they deserve. Everybody needs to remember, the whole reason why we talked about this was for the victims. This has nothing to do with us. This has everything to do with giving these young men uh, they uh, have an opportunity to have their voices heard and for them to be vindicated because they had to suffer in silence. They have they have had to suffer in silence, people. And all we did was give these people an opportunity to have their voices heard. That's it. Exactly. That's all we've we been doing, been, Marcellus, for yeah. years. That's all we've been doing. I'm not big as the TKs and some of these other, you know, bloggers, but... You know, we over here, we stand up for what's right. And we we don't, we don't, you can't gaslight us over here. We're a little bit smarter than that. This is the hood tape. So, you know. Yes. <laughs> but even if you, but even if you disagree with me, even if you think I'm a pile and a piece of shit, at least come to me and let's have the conversation about it. And, and I, you know, because like I told Daryl and them get mad when I do this though. Because I'll tell Daryl in a minute, drop the link and let people come up. If they disagree, they disagree. Because I know how to speak for myself. You feel me? Yep. So and it's called adulting. Just, it's called adulting. Yeah, Agreed let's just have a conversation. Right. But what you're not going to do is you're not going to lie on me. And what Larry has done for these past years is he's lied on Daryl, talking about the man wanted to put three bullets in his chest and all of this foolishness. I mean, it was sick what that man did. And he had all those people out there supporting that foolishness. And some of them are still going to support him regardless. But I want you all to see this for what it is. Everything that Daryl Moore has told y'all has come to pass. Period. Period. Yep, and that's why I said Daryl, TK, a lot of people who've been interviewing and being advocates for these victims. Oh, I'm sure this day is going to be like... <laughs> Etched in stone. <laughs> yeah, this is going down uh, in history. Oh, and there's more to come. Guess what? There's more to come. Oh, there's more to come. Don't think that this is the end of this story, you I'm all. I'm looking forward to it. I am. That's exactly what I said today, too. Well, I, I said that a couple months ago, too, when the Bishop Jake situation happened. I said, oh, this is just the beginning. Yeah, he's this trying to extort the man. The end of it, Marcellus. It's going to leave everybody having to say, I have to go with the lesser of the evils because it's going to be so damaging to the church as a whole. People are not going to know who to follow. Well, here's what I'll tell you, which I told I was talking to a woman today um, and she was talking to me. And see, this is why I do what I do. The lady came to me and she said, you know, I'm not questioning the deity of Christ. She says, I'm not questioning who Christ is in my life. She says, but 
I'm starting to question a lot of this stuff that we've always been taught. And I said, I understand where you are. Um, I would I simply say, if you believe in having a relationship with the Holy Spirit is very important. I said, because the Bible says he will lead you and guide you into all truth. He's the paraclete. He's the one who's called alongside to help you. I said, we've gotten so far away from the fundamentals of the teachings of Christ that the, the muddy wa the water has gotten so muddy that people don't know who to believe or trust. And then preachers are thinking, oh, it's a great falling away. No, it is God separating the wheat from and the tear. It is a separation. There has to be a divine separation. And, and I've been telling people for years and years and years, even before COVID happened, I didn't even know this was going to happen. I didn't know God was going to do it the way he did it because <laughs> I probably would have been saying stuff way different. When we went through that whole situation where nobody could go to church and we was all up in our houses turning on the Internet to watch church and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And now they're crying and begging people to come back to church. Get your butt back up in here and all of that. They don't understand. The things had shifted. But we had been there seven, eight years prior to that. And, yep. and there's a difference. People are having a personal, they're getting closer to understanding that Jesus plus nothing equals everything. You don't need all of this other stuff. You keep adding off all this stuff. You got lions and tigers and bears. You got mimes in church. You got people with flags and y'all doing all of this dancing and you got all this stuff. You don't need all of that to serve Jesus. I'm just saying it's good entertainment. It's good way to spend your Sunday if you want to spend your whole Sunday, you know, wasting away. <laughs> right, right. I agree. Well, walking it but, out, walking it out. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, let me give let me give William Murphy some grace. I don't know how you can walk it out on a Sunday morning when you can't work it out to speak with your ten year old son that you've denied. And that you won't go back and get Ooh. and have a full on relationship. Ooh. What are you walking out? Ooh. What what you what you walking out? He walking the devil out the door, I think. I oh mean. no. How can you walk the <laughs> devil out of the door of your church, but you won't walk him out of your life? You won't walk Whoa. him out of your life so that you can have a relationship with your own child. These people are sick and nobody confronts them. Nobody says anything to them. And that's why I will always be here. That's why I will always be talking like this and I will always challenge you. I don't mind if you challenge me. It is what it is. But them niggas is crazy. And if I was in North Carolina and if I was in the back in the South, I would be talking the same way. We don't play this stuff in the South. I don't know where you all are, but right these the niggas is they crazy. <laughs> these niggas is crazy. What kind of pastors are these? They need to throw. They need to throw a lot of them away. Just throw the whole pastor away. <clears throat> like throw the whole pulpit away. Like really. And just because you have a gift and a talent doesn't mean you're smart. And this is another thing we need to get to. Just because you can sing like a mockingbird or you can preach doesn't mean that you have the uh, you, the intellectual prowess mm -hmm. to actually teach everybody and reach the masses of the world. Some people should just do what Beyonce do. Look pretty, but keep your mouth closed. Oh, because, if you, because, it, because if you ever hear Beyonce speak, you will be like, now, wait a minute. <laughs> oh. I'm, just, I'm just saying, you just need to look pretty, do, focus on your talent, but keep your mouth closed. Because you're not intellectually astute enough to, to speak to the masses and speak to the world and you can't address situations. That's why y'all are going to learn how to deal with Kim Burrell. Kim Burrell has an enormous amount of talent, but she's bitter and she's mean and she's uh, crazy uh, and she's not intellectually astute. Uh, the reason why she, she's work, she's trying to win a Grammy and to be liked by the masses while putting people down every time and every chance she gets. And that is ungodly <laughs> that is, ain't not cute about it it's ungodly with love and kindness have i drawn thee do you think somebody is going to feel any inkling to make a change from a cut with, with with ridicule 
<clears throat> and criticism coming from an angry, bitter person. They'll never look at the God in you. They can't see it because they're too hurt and too wounded. You can't approach people in a, with, with, with all of this godly rhetoric come out of your mouth. And you and you full of bitterness and hate. You need to, if you are a physician, go and heal yourself first. There's but she's supposed to represent the church. Supposed to. Hey, you heard the uh the old uh saying some were sent and some just went in reference Absolutely. to the scripture, many are called, but few are chosen. Some were sent right. and some just went. Everybody ain't called. Right. And do you know the difference between being called and chosen? Here's the difference. When God Be calls different. you, when when God calls you, you have to wait for him to give you your instructions. When he gives you your instructions and gives you the specifics of your instructions, that's how people to are, are able to identify whether or not you've been chosen or not. See, most of these preachers and pastors are repeating the same stuff and doing the same stuff. There's nothing that differentiates them from the pastor down the street other than the car he drives or maybe the house he lives in. But when it comes to the specifics of their calling, most of them don't, they cannot pinpoint and give you anything specific that's specific to them versus the preacher down the street. Because when you are chosen by God, God gives you a specific responsibility to the entire body of Christ. OK, you have a you have a responsibility. And when God puts that on you, that burden on you, then you are responsible to carry out that duty. And that is the duty that you're going to have to stand before God and give an account for. Period. Right. I don't play period. with these people. I don't play Everybody with these people. Has a, their own individualized thumbprint. Everybody is uniquely designed and caught for their purpose. And here's another thing. <clears throat> God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies who he calls. So you can be as gifted as you want to be, but just because you're gifted don't mean that God can use you. Right. God can use an empty vessel before he can a full one. Because that's the that he has to do. <laughs> Daryl and I both. Daryl and I both have been mm -hmm. crying all day. And, and we ain't gonna cry on this live, I promise y'all. We cry, we cry in our private time. I, I, swear, I swear. No, y'all listen to me. Listen, listen, Daryl was crying so hard today because I reminded Daryl. I said, Daryl, God used you to bring this to the forefront. I said, they can say what they want about you, whether you drink brown liquor, smoke cigars, and do whatever you want or whatever you do. They cannot deny, Daryl, that God used you for this, for this job. And Daryl was used by God. I can tell you guys the very morning that God spoke to me and told me not to leave Daryl Moore's side until this whole thing was done and, and finished. And I have been with Daryl from day one. And the reason why is because I knew that these church folk was going to try to do this foolish attacks and all of these lies they was going to put out and all these other vloggers that Larry was going to use to attack Daryl's character. Daryl is a college educated man. OK, he is not a dummy. He is not crazy. He is not disrespectful. As a matter of fact, sometimes now I'd be getting mad at Daryl for not getting mad. I'd be like, nigga, what's wrong with you? Like, you know, I get so upset sometimes with Daryl. I'd be like the hell wrong with you? These, you know, now I realize he can't say certain things, but me and Daryl go at it, but we don't do that in public. <laughs> right. You got to keep it behind the scenes. Keep it behind the scenes. <laughs> that but nigga I and I be fighting. Y'all just I'm don't know. Like too. I'll be like, what? You ain't mad? Like, shit, let's give a thing. No, but, uh, I, I I'm I'm excited to hear Daryl tonight. I and I just dropped his link too. I dropped both of y'all links in the chat. I'm excited to hear him speak. And I know I, I already saw the title of his show said Vindication or Vindicated or something like that. And that's why when I first started this show a couple of hours ago, I said I know that Daryl Moore is over there shouting, doing a two step because this. This right here, what we what we the word that we received today 
from Vincent, aka Buddha. Man, I know, uh, I know Daryl is over there just like we were right now. You, like, now you know we I'm gonna be drink. honest. <laughs> we weren't shouting. You know what we were doing? We were crying. We were crying, bawling tears, wiping this tears from our faces. That's what we were doing. You know why we were doing that? Because we have seen God work through this whole situation. We've learned a lot. We we but we have clearly been able to see the hand of God through this whole situation. We were crying. I started it off. I was bawling. I ain't gonna even lie. I ain't even gonna front. I was crying because the same presence that I feel today is the same presence that I felt when God first spoke to me about Daryl. I don't mince words. I there's a reason why I've been here and I've been supporting him. I keep reminding Daryl, Daryl, I done lost a whole lot of money fooling with you. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you. I believe you. <laughs> It's the truth. It ain't no lie. And I said, okay, Daryl, I'm here to the end until until God says go or stop. Um, but y'all just keep praying for him. Pray for those children over there. Pray for Shamako. Pray, pray for Shamako's son. Pray for Larry's kids. Um, that's where my, my focus and my prayer has, has shifted to now. Because we all can see who Larry is, right? We know who he is. Yeah. If the rest of them people can't see it, that's on them. But we all know who can that I, man is. Can I ask you a question, please? Yes, ma'am. What is a what is a horizontal relationship? Oh, <laughs> horizontal friendship. <laughs> oh. Now, we said a horizontal friendship was basically a horizontal friendship. It's a flat oh, friendship. You flat. You're on the ground. You're in the bed. Is that what it really means? Well, I'm just there's a, there's several things I want to say. Let me say this. First of all, there's no such there's no such thing as no horizontal uh, friendship or relation. I don't know unless you're doing the horizontal mambo. I don't know anything else. Uh, that's the first thing I thought, but that's what he kept saying today. He kept saying I have horizontal friendships with a lot of people, and I just started. Yeah, because he's lying. <laughs> okay, now this is now this is where oh I'm gonna give you a really good key key now. But see, this is how my brain works. And, and and I can't wait to say this tonight. You're going to hear it first here. Somebody years ago, like a year or two ago, there was a Thanksgiving dinner that Larry had in one of these houses that he rented, that he rents, um, you know, for events and things. It's like an Airbnb kind of thing. He always had an Airbnb. And he had his whole crew over there, Latrice. Uh, that was Shamako's ex-wife, the, the lady that's now married to the, the soccer player, from what I hear. Um, and this that's a whole weird situation that deserves a whole conversation, too. How is your ex-husband going to marry you to another man? He going <laughs> to officiate the service? <laughs> I mean, because really, y'all want to get... Your marriage was contractual anyway, so yeah. Okay, but I'm just saying that deserves to be talked about, right? So, so mm -hmm. here's the thing. Now, here go Latrice with these two big ass titties sitting on top of this Thanksgiving table. And I'm sitting here looking at these two big ass titties like two big Christmas turkeys. And I'm sitting here like all of these men and not one of y'all has stuck y'all dick in between them two big ass titties like Mike, Pil like Mike Lindell's My Pillows. And ain't nobody done nothing. I'm like, I don't get it. Something is off around here, right? Like who who would be surrounded by all of that? And you say, oh I uh, oh no 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 that ain't what I want. <laughs> that ain't what I need. That ain't what I need. I need to to I I'm just saying. <laughs> just, oh my I'm god! Just I'm saying. Tears over here, dude. <laughs> no, I'm just you saying. You me to a pray. Wait a minute. Did you did you, see, did you see that woman's? Well, I, I'm I'm just saying that woman had the biggest titties. Now I look here. Let me tell you something. God is good and, and he 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 maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. Let me tell you something. I'm sitting over there to myself going, what is people talking? This man playing in our face. He playing and they're playing in our face. And I'm over it. But I'm gonna call it like a TI is I'm I'm not gonna let these people off the hook. So it is well, what it said, is. They on she, said, or, she said on the audio recording that she was willing to enter into a contractual 
agree a, a marriage with him, but there was just no sex or intimacy or anything like that. Well, that's against the law, first of all. Right? Is that it, Matt? Marcella? She well, no, no, no. It's a, no, no, no. Hold on. If okay. he doesn't have a green card and you're trying to marry him so he can stay within the state, ladies and gentlemen, that is against the law. That's so why, do you, why the, the, the whitehead dude said they was going to try to make it a federal thing. It's against the law. Uh -huh. Okay. And, and so my thing is this. First of all, who put her on audio saying that? And what was the motive behind them putting her on audio saying that? Who did that? Larry? Well, this is this, this is with Vincent. This was Vincent. Uh, this is recordings. I don't know. Oh, so that was got Vincent. What from. Mm. Yes, because he it was he also recorded Larry him Larry him Larry telling him that he his spirit is in him. What, yeah, but, that ain't what he. That ain't what he. On the recording with 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 uh, what's her name, Latrice? Was that Vincent and Latrice, or was that Larry? It's Larry and uh, Vincent. It was Larry and Latrice, but I, but Vincent had the recording. How That's he what got I'm saying. So know. how did he get the recording? Uh, of yeah, Latrice? yeah, yeah. And yeah. I don't. Know. Yeah. Well, Not well, unless he was there. And that could have been. been. Yeah, sleek recording everything because he had a reason to be doing what, and maybe for such a time as this. And sometimes, uh, I mean, you would think, why would he be? Doing? But when you are in the midst of something shady like that, and you feel like you just might need to protect yourself, he got he got a paper trail for sure. You better have one cover. when it comes to these people yeah. on the internet. You better have a paper yeah. trail. Yep. Yep. And I hope, I hope, I know how it is in here in Nebraska. <clears throat> it just got to be a one party consent. So I hope he's in a one party state. I don't know. Yeah, he's in Georgia. Okay, he's in Georgia, I believe. Okay. Yes, yes, okay. yes, it is. I hate for Larry Reed to come down there and try to bop him on his head because of that. Well, Larry's going to stay away from Buddha because he don't know what Buddha has. But guess what? Mm -hmm. Y'all keep, keep watching because this is only the beginning. Have we ever lied to y'all? No, we have nope. never lied to y'all. No, nope. just keep watching. This is just the beginning. Nope. And Larry and thinks this is I over and done the with. Cigar, the cigar, the cigar blogger. I always was like <laughs> on his side, on his side, because I know Larry. Like I said, you gotta be blind and dumb. Um, even damn Stevie Wonder. To see that Larry Reed was gay, and again, it's not the fact that you're gay because you can be right. gay or bi, right? You don't have or nothing bi. against gay people over here or bi, but it's the fact that you're dragging your dragations and all that kind of stuff on people who are sleeping with the same yeah. sex. You've been doing that for decades and outing people and having their family members come up and do interviews and all that kind of stuff, and you doing that to your baby mama, your ex wife, and you. You got more boy toys than everybody, okay? But you, it's the whole hypocrisy thing for me. The what, like and let me let me just end by saying this for my little part: what they did to TD Jakes or are trying to do to TD Jakes, everybody should be ashamed of. I don't even like most of these preachers, but what these people are allowed to do and say in the public, these people should be ashamed before God for saying these horrific things that they said about that man. I personally had an experience with T.D. Jakes way back when he had the one and only conference, manpower conference that he had in California. Uh, and if, you, if you've ever listened to me talk about it, uh, if you're gonna investigate T.D. Jakes, you need to know where to start. See, most of these people don't know where to start. And I'm not even gonna throw no names out here right now because uh, I don't wanna give nobody no ammunition, okay? Uh, you do you do what you do, but let me just say this: you don't know who what you're talking about. First of all, stop lying on the man. And just mm -hmm. because a man goes to a party, which of course he should not have done, because the Bible right. talks about not letting your your good be evil spoken of, right? That's we're the not. Point. We're, That's we're, what I said. Yep. You know, we're supposed to shun the appearance of evil. The if you evil. go to the party, you know, you wave your hand. You kiss everybody mm -hmm. and then you make your quick exit. You don't be at the party celebrating and listening to the music and dancing and all that foolishness. You get your behind out of there, right? 
So that's just how that goes. But they lied, or they've been lying on TD Jakes in regards to this Manasseh Jordan situation. Period. And it will not, it will not work, Larry. You will not be getting five million dollars from TD Jakes. Okay, you won't be. And, and, and to be honest, he kind of, he kind of guided Manasseh through that whole thing. He pulled Manasseh out of the woodworks and 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 told him. To, you need to go on and go forth and expose. You sure it was Larry mm -hmm. and not his daddy? Well, I'm saying, well, like you said, <laughs> he was born in Dirty Work, so you very well could have been. But mm -hmm. I'm just saying, you know, it's it's been like I, I know. I went to two woman dollar loose conferences. And when I tell you the experience that I have for those conferences, I know that God moved. In, in the midst of those conferences. And there were more than just people than just TD Jakes, but I'm talking about the classes, the financial literacy classes, the classes to boost your businesses, to, if you want to become a right, they had all types of things. And then the different preachers that preached throughout the day, when we went, we committed ourselves for those five days down there in Atlanta, Georgia, in that heat, we committed ourselves because we were going to get something. And I'm telling you, lives will really change at those things. But you're going to get what you go for if that's what you're concentrating on doing. But I can't, I don't have anything, any negative thing to say um, because I never had a bad experience with him. Right. But I will say that since this whole thing came out, it's got me to the point to where, oh my God, you know, I think subconsciously it got me to the point to where I don't even halfway turn it on anymore, or any of them. Because I do, it, I, I get up every every morning, normally and do a, or a devotion every morning, listen to the word of God in some way. And I, and I think that's what Satan, Satan's whole purpose and exactly. plan by using some of these people exactly. is to get people to doubt that God is real, that Jesus is real, that the, that your personal experience with Christ is fake and a fraud. You know, you know what personal experience that you had with Christ when you encountered exactly. him. You understand what I'm saying? The whole, those of us who've had our personal experiences by the blood of the lamb and what the word of their testimony. It is our testimonies that cause people to understand what Christ yes. has done really truly through our lives and in our lives. It's not, let me tell y'all something. Daryl ain't even the same person. God's working on Daryl. People don't really, he's not the same man. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Hey, we all a work in progress, Marcel. Absolutely. He is not the same man, you guys. He really isn't. I praise God for it. Daryl, Daryl's been through a lot, but he's not the same dude. I'm telling y'all, you're not the same dude. And I'm like, all right, man, I'm with you. We I was picking at him the other day because he always hollering about he's not a church dude. The other day, Daryl was quoting more scripture than I was. Let's wait a minute. <laughs> well, how you not know, church dude? To this show tonight. It's at 10 o'clock, right? Yeah, it's uh it's um, I think at ten thirty. Is it ten thirty? I think it's ten uh, or ten thirty Eastern. Oh, okay. Um, so that would be nine. See, yeah, I saw it at nine thirty because I'm central. So uh Cislo, who's up above your head, or I think so. Is she above you now? No, she's next to you now. She's uh, Eastern. Year. Yeah, she's Eastern. Yeah, I'm I'm at oh, okay. All right. So let me tell you, y'all, y'all keep praying for them kids over there. Um, those people ought to be shame of themselves. And my whole purpose, yes, I want them to feel some shame about what they've done. I most certainly do. I want to prick their conscience and make them understand that that what they're doing has ramifications and it's not funny. And I don't think anything about this is cute. I don't think anything about this is, you know, okay. You know, and then like I had to tell uh, them folks down in Buddhist chat, quit hollering about clicks, likes, and views. I'm sick of everybody coming on here talking about uh, all y'all talking about it for a click, like, and a view. Listen here, 
Everybody who's on YouTube is on YouTube for a click, like, and a view. Stop using that like it's ammunition against other people. I right. want you to get your, client, your click, and for everybody that's coming behind this, make sure you click the like button on this video and yeah. subscribe to this channel because that's what everybody is on the internet for. You're on here for a click, like, and a subscribe. So stop trying to use this like a weapon against people for having conversations. Y'all get on my nerves with that, and I can't take it no more. And Well, and, you know what, Marcellus? We are, I don't know if you know, but we're part of the beef sector on YouTube. I don't know if you heard of that sector. I think Daryl Moore probably knows Oh, yeah. About no, yeah. no. We're Roxanne, Roxanne and them introduced me to that. And, and yes. that doing let me see your transcript. <laughs> we are part of the beef sector. And one thing that one of the uh, content creators... Say here, yes, you are. Well, she don't beef. She don't beef, but she's been intertwined, you know, over the years. But uh, one thing one of our content creators say over here is if you put it out here on YouTube, we're going to talk about it. Absolutely. So that's our that's our beliefs over here. If you put it out there, we're going to talk about it. You have every so, right. Yep. Have every right, Absolutely. and I got introduced to the beef sector. I don't really, I don't, I don't have beef uh, with people, so I don't really be going back and forth. I don't, you know, that's just I not my either. thing. I don't either. Feel free to always come over here because we might be in the beef sector because we've been around here for like six, seven years, but we don't beef. We, I'm not a beefer, but I am part of the beef sector because we do a lot of commentary on stuff that do be going on. But our uh, slogan is. Uh, we discuss everything over here from the hood to the White House and beyond. Right. So we discuss everything right. from the beef sector, from the hood, the news, celebrities. You know, we discuss everything over here. Larry Reed. <laughs> right. We discuss everything over here. So, yeah. But, yeah. Well, we I'm, I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys letting me chime in on your, on your platform today. Um I'll end my comments with saying, please pray for Shemako's son, pray for Larry's two girls, and Jesus plus nothing equals everything. Don't let these people deceive you into thinking that God isn't real and, 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 and discrediting your personal experience because I met Jesus. I had a real encounter with Jesus before I met any of, of, of the pastor, preacher, prophet. I didn't even know what the, in any of that was. Um, now, I, you know, I've been to church as a five year old, six year old. You know, I have my person, you know, my, my family taking me to those things. But, you know, you just go because that's what your family does. Right. But I had an encounter with Christ at 430 a.m. one morning. So uh, my experience is completely different and I'm not playing with y'all. Y'all can keep trying to play all of these games that you want to play. But I had a personal experience that that trumps whatever the whatever y'all talking about <laughs> and and peter and i will when, when i if, if i get to uh make it into the pearly gates i hope i live next door to peter because he's my kind of person i because know that's peter right would, <laughs> peter would he would cuss you out and, and cut your ear off at the same time and and I, I i love jesus but i might cut you if you get too close <laughs> thank, you. thank you everybody on this platform was raised in church every one of us uh, some of us were first ladies. Some of us had parents who were pastors. So we were all raised in the church, but we also all from the hood. So we uh, we understand that. I believe in God and everything, but I will fuck you up. Like, exactly. Because like, I am from I am from the PJs. So don't yeah. get it twisted. That's right. So. The product, we were just talking about the product, <laughs> the product down in our city. Like earlier, we were literally just talking about the old projects in our hood earlier today. But yeah, don't get it. Well, twisted. if you come by this video, you'll know I'm telling the truth. I, I know all about Happy Hill Gardens. I know about yeah. Cleveland projects. I know about Kimberly projects. I know about Piedmont Circle. Don't get it twisted. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. All up and all up and through them projects is where I was and where my family was. So I, I you know, I, I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth, but I thank God every now and then I can put a couple gold ones in there now. Thank Amen. You. Uh, uh, so, you know, God bless y'all. God bless you too. And I'll see you over there. You're going to be on the panel with Daryl, right? I will be there tonight. It's going to be fun. We're going to have us a good time. Well, you go know, tell, tell Daryl the hood table is sliding through. Okay. I will definitely do so. Y'all be blessed. All right. You be Thanks blessed too. Thanks for coming up. I enjoyed you.
Oh, yes. before I go, did anybody have a question for me? Because I hate to leave before anybody anybody well, in the I chat. Because I... when is you gonna start going live on your own platform? Because you got a lot of subscribers over there. Right. Well, uh, let me let me just say this. Like I told y'all, I have a legal matter that needs to be resolved. Um, okay. When that legal when that legal matter is resolved, um, hopefully you will see me again. Uh, that, no, no, hopefully you will see me again. Um, okay. But I'm just waiting. For, I'm waiting for my legal matter to resolve itself. And when okay. it resolves itself, I will see you guys again. Listen, we're going to have a whole week of revival when I come back. I'm going to talk about right some now. stuff that you guys ain't even gave no thought to. I'm, I'm going to lay it all on the line. Anybody who's oh, followed cool. my program, y'all know how I get down. I don't I don't talk about stuff that everybody else is talking about. Right. I tell you stuff that you just you didn't even know was happening. <laughs> hey, I'm here for it. I'm here for it, bro. When the church opened back up, if you need some deacons and ushers, <laughs> and I, I can be in the choir. I can be in the choir. I can hold a little. Time. Time. <laughs> if you well, need some people to call some money or some um, what they call the the people to be on the door bouncers um <laughs> a, a dick <laughs> a bouncer. yes 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 or you need to pay somebody bouncers. Bouncers. All right bouncers, yes. that's funny yes well, I, you know we got your back or if you need to pay somebody to Cut somebody off for you, stuff like that. You oh, know. we got oh. you on that. We got you yeah. on that. We will touch you well, if you've ever same breath. listen, if y'all ever heard me on my program, you know I'm a good cusser, so I can I slay all dragons. And when you come over to my platform, you better come on your best behavior because I will pull you up and cut you out in front of everybody. Oh, I don't play those types of games. <laughs> I don't cut. I'm saved. I don't cuss. Yeah, I'm sister, don't curse. We curse for her. <laughs> You know what? You talk too much, bro. <laughs> That's bitch. You ain't saying nothing the whole girl. time you've been up here. And then you won't come tell that. Well, that's what I do. I'm just chilling. I'm in the back because, you know, the truth is being spoken. Ain't nothing to talk about. Shit. I know Marcellus was speaking some truth tonight. I ain't mad. Eddie, thank you for so our Sweet. platform. I'm here you with You guys are hand. so welcome. Just soaking it up. And thank y'all for allowing me to speak. Is your wife Mary? Is my who Mary? Is, she is your what? wife Mary? Oh, Lord. I, no, my wife would be married if she was married to me. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, no we, just asked, no we just asked. Now, wait a minute now. I know I ain't had no wine yet. Are you trying to confuse me? Look, I ain't even had my drink. What did you do? She almost, she almost Ooh, had just, Like the people want to know. I had no. a tiger. Oh, I guess she was. Asking, I guess she was asking for the peoples for the chat. If Are I'm married, no, no, I'm not married. So to okay. answer that question, no, I'm not married. Okay, mm -mm. all right, okay. All right. Are you, I, I, I ain't strike no chord. Did I did I the wrong note? <laughs> no, nah, you didn't strike no chord. No, you just okay. confused me because you said is my wife married. And I said, I, it kind of start, it, it startled me because I was like, now, wait a minute. What you mean is my wife married? Because uh, I know I know Larry's we, Reed's wife got married uh, to a wife. Yeah, she tried to put one over on you, Marcellus. Yeah, I'm like, messy. what? Be a messy. Trying to be messy. Uh-huh. <laughs> I wasn't but, being messy. I was being sassy. Uh, but I wasn't being messy. I'll be being sassy. Both but the it's same. Like, yeah, you can be yeah, messy I, while you're being sassy. I was sad. looking at your picture on your on your page when I went to He's go handsome, subscribe. Huh? He's handsome, huh? He's handsome, huh? You know, I was just saying, yeah, I was looking over there. Oh. You know, I don't know that. I don't know like that, uh -huh. you know? Yeah, I wasn't well, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. that. You look nice in the shoes. I wasn't going to say that. Since no brought it up, I wasn't going to say shit. Yeah, oh, but you do know, that. but you do know, I'm, I, I, but you do know, uh, well, I can't get into that, but I am talking to a woman from Detroit actually at the moment. But you did say oh, you was from Detroit, right? It, did you it, say it, you in it, Detroit? Not me, but I give her a run for her money, doggone. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I know that's like, man, so you shoot your voice, yeah. 
and I and I cook in five different languages. Oh, you hear me? Oh, you cook in five languages. Okay. That's funny. I cook in tongues. I cook in tongues. All right. I'm gonna have to use that one. I cook in five different languages. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. <laughs> well, y'all right, get ready because right, me. Don't want to keep you on here too long. I know you got a whole show that you got to do. With, yeah, uh, me and Daryl is me and Daryl is gonna cut up tonight. Um, I so cannot it, wait. Ooh, yeah, I cannot we're wait. gonna have fun. <laughs> so them niggas better get prepared because I'm I'm not even gonna hold nothing back. Uh, but I'm gonna well, talk. Gonna I'm gonna talk. Yeah, I'll talk regular for a little while, but then I'm gonna just just. I'm gonna go in on the people I need to go in on, um, and it is what it is. But I appreciate y'all. Y'all enjoy the rest I'll of y'all night. Just, just remember, Cislo. Okay, S I will. Yes, Cislo and the Hood Table. We'll be over there, and I'm gonna share live when he go live. I'm gonna share out the live too. Sis, you gonna have to run your commercial separate from me. Don't do that. What happened? What? Just saying. You know what's up? I seen some powerful niggas you're going on. All right, Marcellus. Welcome to the hood table, Marcellus. No problem. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. We believe in God, but we touch the fuck up over here. Okay. Oh yeah, I know. I know because that's what they. I didn't mean no. That's what they do in the B sector. I get it. I I love y'all, man. Oh, All right, guys. We love y'all too. We love y'all too. Right, we'll right. be over there. We'll be over there. Yeah, right. we'll talk to y'all later. Really do love. Sure. All I right. really do love y'all.